In this video, I'll show you a fun way to set type to look like an object, taking your design from this to this. Follow along in this tutorial and get a closer look at how to create a path around an image in Photoshop and later add it to an InDesign project. We'll also apply a text wrap to add text inside the path of a light bulb shape. There's lots to cover here, so let's jump right into this video and start creating. Let's start by launching Photoshop and then open the lightbulbimage.jpg file that's available to you. The first step will be removing the background but also creating our path. So let's click on the quick selection tool and then choose select subject from the top here and Photoshop's AI will detect the edges and create the selection for you. Now you may need to clean it up. You can see in this case, it didn't pick up the entire piece here. So I'm just gonna click anywhere with my positive brush here in the quick selection tool, click on it once and it'll pick up the rest of that piece. Now I'm gonna go up to my layers panel here and I'm gonna unlock this layer. And I'm also going to add a layer mask. You could click this little icon here to add the layer mask and what that will do is simply remove the background. Now you can see it picks up a lot of the edges from that orange background that was there previously. So I'm just gonna add a hue and saturation adjustment layer to this. If I click this icon here, and go down to hue and saturation. I'm just gonna turn the saturation all the way down to the left. So now it's just a simple white light bulb and that's exactly what we want in this case. Now that our background's been removed, we can go ahead and create our path. So go back to the layers panel, hold command on a Mac, that would be control on Windows and click on the layer mask icon here. That's the black thumbnail in the layer mask. Go ahead and click that that will reactivate the selection. Now I can right click it. Remember, I'm still in the quick selection tool when I'm doing all of this, and I wanna select make work path. We'll leave the tolerance at two, and then I'll click okay. You can see that the selection has become a path now, and this will be helpful for us when we open this PSD file in InDesign. One other thing I'd like to do is rename the path. You can see down here in the bottom right hand corner under the paths window. If I double click that, I can rename that. So let's call this bulb path. And then just simply click OK. As a last step, I'm just gonna save this as a PSD. So file, save as, and I'm gonna call this lightbulb image underscore two. And then I'll just click save. Now we can jump back to InDesign. I'm back in InDesign and I have a poster for a fictional Detroit Film Fest event. And in the center of the poster, I've left some space to add our artwork, the light bulb that we just saved from Photoshop. You'll notice in my layers panel, I'm working on a layer called bulb wrap. This is the layer we'll use to add our path. So I'm just going to drag on the image here that we just saved from Photoshop. There it is. I'm gonna start on the left side margin, click, hold shift while you're dragging. It just gives you a little bit more control on the size of the frame, and then just release. I'm gonna make that frame a little bit deeper there. Click on the content grabber, hold option command, and then greater than. We're gonna increase this significantly. So something like that is fine. Next, I'm gonna click on this frame and then go to object, clipping path, and then options. This will bring up the clipping path options and in the type dropdown, if you were doing this from scratch, you could try using the detect edges feature in InDesign, but because we already set one up in Photoshop, you could see the option is there, Photoshop path. So go ahead and click that and you can see our path is activated and there's the path, bulb path. Remember we renamed that in Photoshop. Go ahead and click okay. Next, go ahead and right click the path and then choose Convert Clipping Path to Frame. Click on the image and Command X to cut the image. You can see that the path is still there, but the image is not. But I have it on my clipboard and we'll need that in just a few moments. Next, I'm gonna click on the Selection tool and then go up to Object, Content, and choose Text. So I've just switched the frame from a graphic frame to a text frame. With this still selected, I'm gonna open up the text frame window. Let me tear it off and place it closer to the frame itself. And I wanna select wrap around object shape. 
Now, typically you would wrap text on the outer bounding box, but in this case, we're gonna invert this frame or this text wrap, I should say. So click on invert and let's set this to about eight pixels for now. Now you'll notice on the pasteboard, I do have a text frame here and it's on the text layer in the layer stack here. And so I'm just gonna bring that over here and place it above the light bulb. And you see that it wraps inside of the shape, which is kind of cool. Now remember, I still have the image on my clipboard. So let me paste that in place. I just wanna ensure that I'm on the poster content layer in the layer stack. And when you are, hold Shift Option Command V to paste in place. You can also go to edit and paste in place. And from here, I could just adjust this frame. So something like that. I just want the bottom part of the light bulb and then adjust the frame like so. And like so, it's so it's not filling the other areas of the light bulb. I'm gonna go back to my layers panel and click text, double click, Command A to select all. Right now the text is left aligned, but let's go ahead and justify it. So you can click justify. You can see that that fills the space a little bit better. You can also try this justification, justify with the last line aligned center. That might work a little bit better as well. But same thing, I can click on my selection tool and adjust this frame so it's closer to the bottom of the light bulb. So something like that, that looks good. Now that the clipping path and text wrap have been applied, I want to complete this artwork by bringing back the light beam burst pieces in the image. You'll notice I only have the bottom portion of the light bulb. So I'm gonna click that and I have a separate PSD file that's also available to you. It's called bulbburst.psd. Here it is. I'm just going to replace it by dragging and dropping. It's been replaced. I'm gonna click on it again and command C and then shift option command V to paste in place. Now this version, I'm just going to extend and you'll notice when I do that, it fills in those pieces, but it also fills in the entire light bulb. To fix that, right click the top version, go to object layer options. And because this is a layered PSD that carries over to InDesign, I can turn off the bulb layer. And if I just move this, you'll notice that the inner part of the bulb has been removed, but the burst, the beams, the pieces here are still intact. So I can go ahead and click OK. Now that could get confusing, but let's fix that. If I go to my layers panel here and collapse the poster content layer, here they are, bulbburst.psd and the repeat of it right under. So let me double click the first one and I'll just rename this burst. And let's rename the second one bulb. And you'll notice I can turn the bulb off and then there's the burst. They're two separate entities now. Another cool effect is clicking on the burst, hold your shift and click on the bulb. So you have both of those layers selected. Go to the opacity drop down here in your properties panel and let's change the blend mode to multiply. This way it blends into the background. As a final step, we could just finesse the design. So let me click off and press W to go into preview mode. I'm gonna click on the burst image here and hold shift command and then drag this down to shrink it down in size. Adjust that accordingly. Click and drag to select everything. And while holding shift command, drag the top handle to scale up the artwork. Use your down arrow to bring it down a bit. You can also rotate the artwork to about maybe 6.25 let's do six let's do seven something like that and if i click off that's how it would look like you can also click on the burst again if you think it's too big bring it down a little bit more and then adjust that accordingly something like that and of course you can play around with it the way you want and then you can always double check the size of the text. So if I double click and select all right now, let's make it eight point. You can always increase or decrease from there. So if you want to decrease to seven, something like that, 
You can also play with the tracking. Right now it's minus 30. If you wanna open it up, you could do that. Maybe minus 10 will work for you. But the shape itself with the light bulb, that's how you create a clipping path and then use a invert text wrap to create this type of effect. Thanks for watching and I hope you can apply some of these techniques to your own projects. If you enjoyed this video and want more just like it, check out this Adobe InDesign playlist right up here. Until next time, take care and keep creating.